Let's fight, guys! Let's fight! Welcome to the ring for each and every one of you, wherever you guys are joining us from tonight around the world. Welcome to the ring. Welcome, 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 welcome. Peace and power. It's Monday night, guys. It's fight night. The fight card is set. And the only question is, where are you guys? I hope you're inside. Will you join us on Twitter? You're joining us on Facebook. You're joining us on LinkedIn. You're a tumor. Welcome to the ring, guys. You're fired up and you're ready to go. Peace and power. Today is a command like one. So, Anthony, Philip, good to see you. Paul and Black, so all the fortune. And all the other folks, peace and power. We trust that you folks are well. We are fired up at our end, guys. And we are ready to go and show that we are shared to all the right places, guys. Share, share, share the down line. Smash that emoji button as well. We know there's a little bug, a little through in the air, guys. And you got to be careful out there this evening. Debbie Morgan, there's something a little through out there. Place and power. We got to watch that. You got to watch that. You got to watch it, folks. You got to watch it. A couple of our colleagues are done with the flu. And I feel like it's a ish. I can tell you that I feel it again. We're watching it, guys. We're watching it. Pace and power. We are so happy that you folks are here. Gwyneth Anderson, Volmir Williams. I see I see Patricia Kisul and Shirley Juice Tendry. Shirley Boy Child. Sheila Boy Child, rather. Uh, Edward, good to see you. Desri Smart, Felix. Uh, Felix Smart, Jordan Cook. Sheila Hazel, good to see you folks as well. We trust that you guys are great. Fired up and ready to go. Uh, Diane Fordyce, we see you there. And you have the Benjamin, all the other folks. Sweetness Bullers. And so well, Les Phillips. <laughs> good. Good to have all of you guys here this Monday evening. Good to see you folks. Show the light. Smash that emoji button. Lots of stories loading this evening. We trust that you guys are great at your end. We are fired up at this end, folks. And we are ready to go. And we trust it's the same for you guys. We really, really trust. It's the same for you, person power. Welcome to the wherever, 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 wherever. You're joining us from the TV. Person power. Cherry Taxi, Edward. I see Cherry John is there as well. And all the other folks, Heaven Fit. Uh, Isaac Davis, good to see you. Sandrine Baird and Gloria Garden, good to have all of you guys here with us. Person power, good to have you here. Sharon Castillo, Joan Stephanie. I see Andy Williams is here as well, guys. We're so happy that you folks are here. I see Anna Doric and Quasi, Gil Ali Cock, Anthony Higgins, Arjun, Diane Fordyce, Spurry Lee, and Keith Smith is here too. Bill Anderson, I see Junior Gibbs, Everett Small, and Andy Williams is here as well. Folks, welcome in the ring. What happened at the Amerindian Heritage Pad? What happened, folks? What happened? What happened? What happened? At the pageant over the weekend. My Lord, 72 hours, two queens. Not in 72. Who knows what can happen? What's happening in Burbies, guys? What's happening in Hope Town in Burbies? Sharman Morris, good to see you in Carol Elliott. Good to see all the other folks joining us. Share the damn life. Smash that emoji button. And Mitchell and Nicole Daniels. Ebon Lamy. Ebon, thanks for the thing. <laughs> thanks for the thing, Ebon. Real sweetness. Real sweetness. Thanks for the thing. Dan Gilzandi and, and Sing. Good to have you, Gloria Gordon, and Linda Booker, and all the other folks. Folks and folks are so helpful to us, and they say, just don't carry names. <laughs> Good to see you, Ibo Lami. Thanks for the thing. Thanks for the thing. <laughs> Who knows? Y'all are getting to the story. We're going to get up to that, the other folks. Who knows? Cherry Jeffrey, Leon Logan, Lyndon Gill, Roxanne Nessa Jacobs, Leslie Thompson, Osman. Good to have you here. Chin Singh, rock and come in. Sharmin Morris, Stephanie Brown. Good to have you. Allison Cortez says, let's go, guys. We are fired up at our end. We are ready to go, and we trust that you beautiful, wonderful folks are as well. Are you guys ready to rumble? We hope you guys are. We are as well, guys. Uh, let me just get the graphic off, and so we can move ahead. Some of y'all can't wait, you know. Some of y'all can't. Party Russia. Pimp it. Good to have you, Carol Hudson, Sandel, Valerie Thomas, Colmingo, quite a holiday, I ain't seen a little bit. Folks, we really need your help, we really, really need your help. We told you guys we were struggling, 
behind with our responsibility since last month, guys. Come on board, partner with us, so we don't have to be embarrassed out there. We got the other looking team. Good to have each and every one of you. You know when you guys come on, you gotta smash that emoji button, share the line, and partner with us. Partner simply means sponsoring, sending a donation, and ensuring that we get to the finish line on a monthly basis. Here's how, good folks. Here's how. Want to keep getting the best in the ring? Right. Yes. You can help us to keep going by partnering with us through your contributions. And it's easy. Send us a daily, weekly, or monthly donation, whichever is most convenient to you. Cash app at dollar sign in the ring 592, Zell and PayPal in the ring 592 at gmail.com, or WhatsApp us on 627-6963 for how to contribute via MoneyGram and Western Union and for MMG payments. Come on, guys, help us along. So nice, we can do it twice. Want to keep getting the best in the ring? Let's play. Yes, you can help us to keep going by partnering with us through your contributions. And it's easy. Send us a daily, weekly, or monthly donation, whichever is most convenient to you. Cash app at dollar sign in the ring 592, Zell and PayPal in the ring 592 at gmail.com, or WhatsApp us on 627-6963 for how to contribute via MoneyGram and Western Union and for MMG payments. Good to have you here, folks. Welcome in the ring. Let's fight, guys. On the fight card this evening, you all know how we do things. On the fight card this evening, a couple of stories at loading. You see that I'm winning Heritage Pageant. The Heritage Pageant. My Lord, over the weekend, 72 hours. We told you guys, two queens. We come into that. We still on the boulevard, folks. We still on the boulevard. We got some stories loading. All boys down Independence Boulevard. Some stories loading there. And folks, this speak of the house in Cayman Islands. My leaves much to be desired. Leaves much to be desired. We saw you, uh, we saw Irfan. Alfred Ali at UN today, folks. He was at the UN today at an education summit. An education summit, right place. Right place. We can bring you some of that. And the Queen is late to rest, folks. The Queen is late to rest. Personal power, boots on the ground. Let's fight. Let's fight, folks. Let's fight. Let's fight. Moving along. A lot of stories loading on the air tonight, folks. A lot of stories loading. You see the bishop, I find the bishop name being called plenty. Why the bishop and the PVP punishing poor people consistently in this country? Uh, punishing poor people consistently, PVPC, in this country. Punishing them. We spoke to some folks living on the, on the boulevard, Independence Boulevard, there in by some. They want to do better. They want to do so much better, but they need a helping hand. The helping hand of the state. And instead of helping them, them boys putting on them, kicking them when they're down. And we did, we did tell you folks, a couple stories loading, we want to share with you guys. As we begin tonight, a couple stories loading. Life on the boulevard, folks. Life on the boulevard. A couple stories loading. Yep. Life on the boulevard. Well, Mr. Ejil come and say that you give me half an hour. Then he pass back and say you give me three days to move if we can move he can bulldoze on with body and i want mr ali see this mr ali i know you're a good man i know that you know that you know that mr edgel treating me the way like this the vice president i know mr jack Leo is an all right man and, if, and this is coming to me right now i know that the vp must be in our by song and check what's going on mr edgel and mr rupsum ben tell a lady up the punch and she's living in a little hut. She got three options. It's either she go in the palms, the orphanage. They may really care about poor people. Um, the morning, Mr. Um, Edgel come and ask me um, who, how I get here. So I turn and I tell you that my husband uses to work with Mr. Um, Thorn. Thorn had a... Um, container right away around here so we be living in camp street force and after then he asked me if i know he is a um we gotta move from here so i tell him yes that i know i know that i gotta move and then but truly speaking i didn't hear when he says palms is 
this, this girl was going there, I hear she say, hey, she'll say spams, but when the reporter come, something like this, she turned and said that, um, you want to go to the palms or, or the health shelter? I said, no way, me want to go there. Then she turned and she said that if, um, if, 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 um, they find some way properly for put me, if I would go, I said, yes, but no palms, no, no, um, health shelter. Because me and all of the invalid, me and bedridden, why we come here is through a house problem with the hand and the man they carry the code and we had to move from camp street and after me gentlemen the um david mr turn running this organization he mr turn said come and stay here ma'am how, how long have you been living here about 20 to 25 years you live in a container yeah you know we have, a, we have a country now that is wealthy. We get a lot of money from oil and gas and so on, but from oil mostly now. Yeah. You know, you live in a container, ma'am. And you're saying that you need somewhere better yes. if they're going to move you from here. Yes, but um, the, the, what do they call the people, um, Cheryl? What do they call the people, um, what does look after this construction? The, the folks on the ministry, yeah. <laughs> Yes, well, they, they, they tell me that they won't trouble this container unless if they get somewhere for me. Up to yesterday, the, the foreman or, or, or the contractor come and tell me that up to this morning, one of them come and tell me that, so that they, they, everything in the hands of the people must the minister them. And just you alone living here, you don't have any kids yeah, or so on living here? It was me and me gentlemen, but he died, he died a um, couple months ago, a year, a year. He, he, he died the 24th of July. Last year? Yeah. So from since then, it's me alone living here with good neighbors around me. Ma'am, we're very sorry for your loss and we hope all this works out for the better yeah. eventually. You know. But if they find some way for me, I don't want to go no way far from me neighbor them because I had an accident, right? And this this on this left side, this whole left side here, so. And they're putting steel from a hip right down to me knee. And the steel now they're giving me a set of absorbs. And from since then they take out the steel, I can't walk a distance. It's some little children over there, my neighbor children them. If I want to send them in the shop, they would go. If I call Cheryl, well, she's my main source. Because when my husband died, I didn't had no, really nobody. And she was the one in and out, back and front, to and front, where I can go, she go. So she's the main one for me. Yes, the would the girl tell me that um, if I like to go to the palms or, or the health shelter, I said, palms? I said, no way. Yep, 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 folks. And that is just one. That is just one of the stories we're following this evening. One of the stories that are loading. You know what, press the poor. Go to them, the good book says, Bishop. Go to them. That will press the poor. That will lend the helping hand. The helping hand the state, that's what you're going to extend to these people. And not try to bully them even more, oppress them even more, war to them. That oppress the poor. Another story following that mishap we had both heading to burn it over the weekend. Yep, 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 yep. Said so the real object in the river there. My real object. They had a mishap. Two went overboard, folks. Well, they're reporting this evening. That those two bodies were recovered this morning. Randy Adams of Batica and now the leech of Charles Stover. Thoughts and prayers go out to them. Randy Adams and now the leech. And thoughts and prayers to them, their community, their friends, and loved ones, folks, as they transitioned this life just recently. Just over the weekend, that mishap. And a survivor 
for that mishap told of his story today is howling escape from the joy of death there in the mighty Asikimo River. Take a look and take a listen. You see, when God save us, live. As we told those folks who joined us on our podcast during lunch, you gotta live when Father said live. You don't know why we have this scene, but Father said we must live. And we can live. Here's that, here that man's account of his howling ordeal in the Asikimo River. By here, so my Bible right here saying, you know I mean, yeah. the incident yesterday. Last uh, night, they actually bought accident here, so right now. Last one, the pickup, out of the water. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, tell the people, like, what would the, the bad, bad experience you had there? Yeah, they can pray a lot, you know. Was going in water for, for a very long time until, you know, I see the boat and all of the rescue. What time, like, you leave, um, what time you left for you? I see little minutes to six, little before, you know. Yeah, so the, you you could remember that among the passenger like we had inside the boat or something? Well, it was twelve or so what twelve of us in the boat. Okay, so okay. The sail and the captain, you know. The the time of the you um the evening when you left for the call, how much did you charge you the captain charge you for come back? Four thousand dollars. Four thousand he take you. So do you think he was speeding, didn't know the river? The speeding he didn't even have the light. You know the river, of course it's not the channel that I normally like, like you say, why would see coming up, he was thing, he was moving way outside. So which part of the boat, like you were sitting, who was in front of you, who was behind you? Or the the Magno was sitting in front of me, and he was behind me, the Madi next, but I was right next up, next, right top of it, right side, in the middle of mm -hmm. That's the next one I was finding. When the boat actually jammed the rock, right, what were the players, what happened like? It was less than like a minute uh, from then. Um, um, I did try to drive the boat, but it was dumb boss and he just overboard. So some people fell out the boat when the boat hit the rock. Some yeah, people fell out the boat. Yeah, yeah. And the man assists the woman with the baby. Who was the um, the first person like actually tried to leave the boat for him to shore us? Adi. Adi was the first person yeah. to come out. Mm -hmm. So, he say any, when the boat jammed as he was next to you, he say anything like to you or to any to he captain? He know it would happen, you know, and just go forward and keep trying to go to shore. Well, that was a sad incident actually, you know, because I know you, you're my good friend. And Adi is one of my good friends to Adi, me, you know, and we are, is one, you know. You got to and know me, silly body. Like, I just studied the thing like this, you know. Yeah, but I thank for life, why? I hold on for the light jacket, the light jacket save me and hold me and keep me here today. Well, that's one of the most mm -hmm. important things, you know, life, right? And I hope that the rest of the people, what are they actually looking for? They actually find them. Yeah, I'm glad too. Because it was a real disaster in the twinkling of a night. So, what's the last thing you saw for life? Um, the, the things that you was coming I lost my bag, cell phone, I had a little cash, passport, you know. And some grocery that they were trying to bring up from some small things to these children. So this is your son alongside you here? Yeah, this is me here. Well, thanks for life. At least you're coming, you know, you, you see, get to see your kids. The kids happy to yeah, see you. And I feel good that, uh, you know, I survived your time. So he was drifting for long in the water? Yes. He's the last man to pick up out of the water. So the place was kind of like black. You, what, you yes. didn't see inland, you didn't know where you at nothing. No, you couldn't see, you know where you got. And no, me never knows where you went. But I know you went on the water. You went far out. Because the, 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 this thing happened, like I, I, I started to go back. Like, water what, was pulling going down yeah. back to the side? Yeah. <laughs> like the water went washing and down back by. You must see what's man, so far you don't meet. Yeah, but he get a little bruises here, you know, get a knock on the head of the boat. But they thank him for life. So when the incident, the boat actually jammed the rock, nobody didn't get instant blackout or, or angel, no, big injuries. Fly out. Okay, one of the things I want to ask you, how many, the boat had full life jackets, um, full equipped? No, that man had a mountain life jacket. It was a few, but it was four or three life jackets went in the boat. You buckled up before you left Korika or how you got your life jacket? No, they really had no life jacket. Since before we met Korika, they had no really life jacket. Nobody didn't get no life jacket. Okay, so when the boat actually jammed, then you put on your life jacket or something? No, the children's life jacket was saved to be a bit more than thing and I hold it. 
some some women done assisting them change them in, you know. Oh, and so when they throw the light stuff. jacket, it land next to you. Yeah, and they hold the lamp on it. If you didn't have the light jacket, do you think you could make it? No, you couldn't make it, buddy. I thank you for life. I wouldn't make it. That's too hard. That's all went down, folks. That's all went down. Only five say must live. You will live. You see, we upside down in this country. Few life jackets the board had. Few. And when the passengers were bored, then they threw a life jacket. He said, we upside down. One of the journalists reported this evening that that boat operator was neither certified and should not have been operating a boat. The boat operator that was responsible for the death of those two citizens was neither certified nor should have been operating that boat. What do we do in this country? What are we doing in this country? And folks, as I come out for these stories at Loden, I told you guys, God is Guyanese, you know. When the father said you can live, you can live. You know, two women are giving them boobies. One is running behind the other to assault her, perhaps. Run across the road, just sir. When the father said you can live, you can live. When you open the door, no man can shut it. And when you shut the door, nobody can open it. But the jury, I better live good with people. Better live good with people. That's what we tell the hell today. Let go with people. Bobis, walk down. Woman, thanking God today. Different. Did you walk down? Different. No, no, no. Do not go by too fast to you. If you go to Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, do not go by too fast. You went fast, you will live, you will live. Even though something real pocketing. Well, father, so you can live, you can live. Take another look at that. Take another look. The different, the different, the different, the different in our town. Hard luck, hard luck. Better thank the father. Better thank the father, folks. We we'll begin this evening on the fight card. We come in from along the world, folks. And very quickly, we have a guest who's going to be joining us this evening, Dr. Vincent Adams. We've been talking about some stuff, some issues in Ireland. Yes, so be the other day we get lawyer, my lawyer, pack of nonsense. He got a real expert this evening. Gonna be telling us about the real truth. It's Susan Island Gas. Come up along the world, it's evening, folks. We told you we began the program. The Queen is dead. Long live the King. The Queen, buried today, folks. And what a sign it was for those mourning her. There must have been some moving scenes today. Her Majesty Lord to rest, folks. Queen is dead. Long live the Queen. Yep. Battle went down just today. Still ongoing. 
Still seeing coverage of it, folks. Money line if I carry ceiling coming in now from around the region. It looks like we get in Basili. Red Basili, the speaker in the Cayman Islands. Yep, at the reception over the weekend, touch somebody allegedly in, inappropriately. Well, the premier says that to go resign by the 23rd of September. You know, people do democracy different than we do it. Uh, and in a proper way, speak of the Cayman Islands, McKeever Bush. Yep. They said to have resigned after harassment allegation. This is according to some reports we received. Over the weekend, can he be anti self? Can he be anti self? Well, you don't like the job yet, clearly. Go to the dance. That's what we say on this side. Go to the dance. That's what we say, folks. The other boy that has no confidence motion against him in the National Assembly right here. A motion of no confidence, he can't see the other people yet. He cannot see the other people yet. He has to go as well. Moving on. Moving on. What are you done at the UN? Gaston Brown was meeting with His Majesty King Charles Richard. Yep. Gaston met the King today. You know, he's been meeting with those heads of state in which uh, the crown is still the head of government and prime ministers and so meeting with dignitaries um, in the wake of the passing of his mother the queen for Gaston Brown seemed to have had the king's full attention to be the prime minister of Antigua and Barbara Gaston Brown with his um Hitler looking um thing yep Gaston Brown and the king folks <laughs> moving on if I can be moving fast tonight guys because we got a guest is going to join us, oil and gas, on the fight cash tonight. And we go all 592. I love to see it. I love to see 592. My heart leaps for joy when I see the 592. Now I see some of y'all. In Johnny Lecaran, good to see you this evening. Charlotte Baines, have a good Good to see you. He gets well down to Mackenzie Talbot, the tissue marker. Good to see you as well. Moving on the fight cash for pace and power tonight. Pace and power. Yep, saw the mayor on the move. And all we gotta say, pay some power. Who's sharing the damn light? Who's smashing the emoji button? Trader Finance, get well soon. We see you out there watching us. We see you out there watching we. The mayor on the move today with the UN resident coordinator, Yasim Oro. Just today, folks, I'm giving a, t a tour also of the UN House. They're talking about partnering with the city to move things along to beautify the city. We love to see development and we love to see the mayor out and about and moving things forward for the city respect and manners mr mayor peace and power who branches with boy who branches my boy peace and power keep on keeping on lord mayor who branches the ride folks share the damn light smash the emoji button and let me go down the road good people let me go down the road call it henry you good lester william shaman morris Patricia Kisun, Chris Kipitz, Henry Anthony, how are you folks doing? Pits and power, trench crackers and jagabats, tap poles and cricketers, carrying crows, scarecrows, jumpy birds, the tape one, what animal fun. Not forgetting the black melon sheep. Kevin, Shannon, Geisus Mingo, Mavis Davis, Rod, Pits and power, Kill the line for people, smash that emoji, but you catch fish. I mean, you and I tell you, you know when I see catfish, on the international stage, folks. I can't lie, I did the edge of my seat. I did the edge of my seat, pray for my country. Where are you going in there? I did pray for my country. <laughs> what I see here on, on that international stage, good people. I can't lie. A lot of times I've been going through it. We saw him today at, at this Transforming Education Summit. I think he was even cheering it. Folks, at a couple of times there, I was cringing. I was cringing a couple of times when I saw you from out front. Cringing, I tell you, cringing. Cringing, cringing, cringing. I kid you not. A couple of times, folks, I was cringing. I can't lie. Who are cringing? <laughs> Here's that boy. Out front, I. To introduce His Excellency. Rajib Tayyip Erdogan, the President of the Republic of Turkey, to make a statement. I thank His Excellency Rajib Tayyip Erdogan 
President of the Republic of Turkey for his statement. Yep. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Your boy. <laughs> Your boy. Russian things. Your boy. I cringe every time. Every time. I make his place before you. But I don't think cringe. Like, I know what. I want what. <laughs> I want what you talk. Let's go get cringing every time. Every time I see a friend outside. I say cringing. I kid you not. I say really cringing. I now have the distinct pleasure and privilege to introduce His Excellency Rajib Tayyip Erdogan, the President of the Republic of Turkey, to make a statement. I thank His Excellency Rajib Tayyip Erdogan, President of the Republic of Turkey, for his statement. Yep, yep, yep. I say in Turkey, oh, let's have it. Let's have it. Yeah, I say in Turkey, I say in Turkey, right? Turkey, Turkey. Right? I look, I say look at that one. Turkey, President of Turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really there. Yeah. Moving on, folks. Moving on. Moving on. It's all already, folks. Another episode of the shit show. I'll speak and tell you. My lord, another episode. An only in Guyana original production. Right up in the GPF, the Guyana police. Work. Another episode. Another episode. And here we have. Famed, accomplished, senior counsel, Nigel Hughes. He said the last report. The RAS says he said the air silent. The last report. Hear what they saw. Them guys from the regional security system. They what they saw. That's a Nigel Hughes say. They what they saw. The in time. How do you come to the way? And you never interview the man who made the allegation. And your silly response to that. Is that the man who made the allegation was arrested by police at the time? That's it. That is it. The man who made the allegation made the allegation while arrested by the police. So they have little confidence in a statement. Well, Nigel put him in the place today. I mean, like I, I just don't know. It's the second time these guys have been here. They come to look into the Henry Boys murder. We see where that went. No, yeah. They come to look into Bascom. It's uh, Bascom's damning allegations. We see where that has gone. No, yeah. This where I get these people from. Why are we wasting taxpayers' money like this, folks? Nigel Hughes, attorney law on the Bascom issue and the last, the last report. The last report, guys, is mingle, but the post 78 silent. Billy Ellis Park, a bunch of king. Guys, says, Nessa Gaskin, Askin Shorts. The last report. Guys, the news on the last report. Well, that's the most unfortunate statement coming from the other. Coming up. That if they had embarked upon the most rudimentary of steps in any form of an investigation, which is to speak to the whistleblower himself, he would have indicated many things to them, including the fact that he had reported, first of all, to the then commissioner of police, Mr. Hoppy. Um, he had reported uh, the incident. This is long before his arrest. He reported the incident uh, to Mr. Hoppy about his concerns about the investigation. He reported his, his concerns about the way in which the investigated, in, investigation was conducted. And that was on the 3rd of March. And I do have here uh, a copy of the printout of the WhatsApp that he sent to Mr. Hoppy. I'm going to share it with the press afterwards. After Mr. Hoppy, he then went to the Minister of Home Affairs uh, and he reported to the Minister of Home Affairs about his concerns about the investigation 
about the fact that he thought the investigation had been compromised and the unusual and unorthodox actions and omissions that were taking place in relation to the uh, investigation. Then on the 14th of April 2022, long before his arrest, he reported to the president, His Excellency Mr. Uh, Irfan Ali, uh, he reported to the president that the investigation had difficulty. Um, he reported specifically he had been sent to Mr. Caesar to look for a suspect in relation to the Ricardo Fagundes murder. And he told him about what had happened. We also have a copy of that WhatsApp that he sent to the president where he commenced his WhatsApp, his WhatsApp message. Good morning, Mr. President. This will also be shared with, with you. So all of that took place prior to the arrest of Mr. Bascom. And consequently, the fact that the RSS would elect to disregard the credibility of Mr. Bascom based on the fact that he was arrested when there was clear evidence that long before he was arrested, he sought not only to speak to the Commission of Police, he sought to speak to the Minister of Home Affairs and the President himself. And I dare say, um, no action was taken as a result of those complaints. So if, if the RSS, according to the Ministry of Home Affairs, has sought to not uh, attribute any credit to the report and statements made by Mr. Bascom because he was arrested. I think that is clearly contradicted by the fact that Mr. Bascom has consistently been reporting to whoever he can in a position of authority about the nature of the compromise of the investigation. That having been said, it means evidently that the RSS report is, I think, of little credible value at the moment. And therefore, it appears, and it's very unfortunate, that the regional security system that is available to the citizens of the Caribbean uh, can no longer be uh, deliver what would be a credible, credible review of both the murder of Mr. Fagundes and the investigation into it. And therefore, in those circumstances, we believe perhaps uh, countries that possess the investigative capacity that can not only review, but can conduct an investigation independently of the persons who have been identified as being um, involved in the um, current state of the investigation, we believe that that is necessary. I know that in the North America, you have the Federal Bureau of Investigation that, that is more than equipped, and there are other agencies, whether in Canada or the United Kingdom. So that was that, that's it as far as the RSS is concerned. Yep, yep, yep. The last report, folks. The last report. My only president. He wrote this, buddy. He wrote that, buddy. He wrote the other person. Long before those damning allegations were made, probably because he had concerns with the investigation. But the last people who come and say, you know, statements may have been prejudiced based on the fact that he was under arrest. Wow. I didn't seek to talk to him. Wow. Wow. We're going to get a chance. Look, story here, folks. National Recount. I'm in the Heritage Project. Try your not. National Recount. Within the last 72 hours, we've had two, two queens, folks, two queens of the Ambrindian Heritage Pageant, two, two, I tell you, two, had a national recount over the weekend, did you miss it? Did you miss it? The crown was taken from Amber Andrews, who seems to have won it fair and square over the weekend, guys, and now the crown sits on the head of Christy Rambert. Christy Rambert from Region 5, the crown was taken from Andrews of Region 8. Wow. Over the weekend, all compliments of Pauline Sukai, who stepped in. She said, even though the judge's decision is final, it's already final. <laughs> there is no place on earth like the In the statement, it has that. In the statement, even though the judge's decision is final, it's already final. We add it back and we got a different number, and that number stands. Mm, this seems eerily familiar. Mm. Where did I know this from? This seems very familiar. My lord. This seems familiar. Like we've been here before. Like we've been here before. We count different results. Somebody out, somebody in. Like I've seen this movie before. Like I've seen this movie before. Says out, Andrews in Rambarat. Within 72 hours, two queens. 
of the American heritage. Pastor, oh, beautiful, Guyana. oh, beautiful, Guyana. Delon Benjamin says, Hazlin King says, the beautiful Guyana. It is the greatest country on earth. Who shared it on live, Trisha Adams? Who looks fast emotion but who for us tonight? Don't worry out there looking tin with the shares. Don't worry out there looking tin with the emojis, folks. Share the damn life. Smash the emoji button. And let me go on the road. Some of you are too nice. Too comfortable. Share, share. Share the damn life. Mayor Campbell, have you shared it? Look what's happening in our beloved country. Well, you, as you can imagine, how Amber Andrews must be. I can imagine Chrissy Amber doing cartwheels, doing some backflips. But Amber Andrews took to social media. And this is what she said. She said, I wish to explain, in words, the emotional damage the Ministry of Amerindian Affairs has caused me. Maybe it's in as well, Patricia Craig, Ivan Randy. I wish to explain in emotional words the way she was so torn up from folks close to her. She was bawling for the last 72 hours. She was in agony, emotional distress. She said, I wish to explain when she could write and summon the energy to do so. I wish to explain the emotional damage the Ministry of Amerindian Affairs caused me and my family. It is an embarrassment, she says. I was publicly humiliated. My wall. I'm hurt. No one deserves this. No one deserves this. This is how you feel in here if I'm talking to you. I'm embarrassed. Humiliated. The young lady said, my God, fraud is fraud. That's what we say, Miss Andrews. Fraud is fraud. She said, the Ministry of Amelia Affairs has caused me emotional damage. There's how much people this, this ministry has caused emotional damage in one year. It's like the ministry is looking for things to come into the headlines about good or bad. Just last week, but Sharon X, you know the PS? When the, when the sting operation, the 200,000 buying a month from the contractor, you remember things last week? You might see more press charges, but like the headline, they start drying out too quick. Sukai, Ariel Mount, aka, jump in today. We have she let you recount. This national patent recount, led by the minister, using an order 60, rejecting. Such an event and the outcome, the outcome, folks, the outcome, as the young lady says, she said, I wish to explain in words the emotional damage the Ministry of American Affairs caused me and my family. It is an embarrassment, I can only understand. The anguish, the pain. I was totally humiliated. I'm hurt. No one deserves this. And you can take that to the bank, Paul in Sukai. You can take that to the bank. Moving on in five care, folks. Cross the truth. Just call your name. Cross the truth. Cross the truth. I don't know what doing in these ministries. You know. I don't know what. Because the folks and the Armenian are still. Uh, they're embarrassed too. Region 10. The folks say they need some attention there. The hostel needs some attention. It's hugs we got living in this hostel. Uh, we need all this island gas. We can't afford to clean us. And what do we do with money in this place, man? What do we do with money? How come I don't see this on them other shows on social media? How come? What do we do with money? Huh? Huh? Is there any money we got to put on these mattresses? This mattress looks like 23,000 people don't sleep on it. Huh? I can see sperm and egg and all kinds of things in this mattress. Might and beetle and all kinds of stuff here. Alright, is there any money we got? Who share the damn line? I want the authority to see it. I'm one of them dragon bots and trans couples. I want one of them to see it. Smash the damn emoji button, share the damn life. I don't belong to you. I want one of them to see it. I want them to see it. it. Black up to the folks. How are going by you? How are things going by you? Huh? We share a lot of things that we don't wish so out going. Huh? You know my senses there? I can tell you all the senses there, but the people with the senses say they ain't got a lot of things yet. Even though they start counting, we count in we. They ain't got pen, they ain't got eraser, they ain't got badge, they ain't got this, they ain't got that. I hope it doesn't affect the census. Folks, the people in charge, oh, oh, you bought any money? 
Spend the money. Don't back in the money. Spend the money for its intended purposes. I beg you. The coordinators and enumerators reach out to us and they say, uh-uh, uh-uh. A lot of things that they promised, the whole package, enumerators kick. Get the kick supposed to get five and take it, get four. Uh, it's like them ballot boxes along the East Coast. It's like them ballot boxes very relevant. And the ballot boxes along the East Coast. It goes like 40. 40 documents, only get four. And they say, yes, you probably don't fit it. Go and produce the goods now. Fraud is fraud. What are they have in the heritage pageant? The enumerators or the March second and twenty general election elections. Fraud is fraud, folks. Moving on, blackout today. Blackout today, folks. Folks, you can take over this whole country. If you wanted to. You can take over the whole country. And this is the whole city. <laughs> if you wanted to. They don't want to post from these schools. You're not going to post. And it's black out for once. You shut down the whole thing. A truck hit. And the voters like the railway embankment. And people in South feeling the tremors and the blackout. Huh? People in Kingston feeling the tremors and the blackout. One truck hit a post. Right? Like the main post. Blackout the whole city. Who knew? One truck, one post. And that's it, you know. One truck and one post. Shut down the whole city. Reminds me of song. One truck, one wash. Then they turn it down. Uh, one truck, one post. I just show you all my age there. But you have my run out. You have my dear that in that run out. You flick out. Them that pull the sun out. Crawl out. Animal farm. The bark out. The bray out. You run out there. It's only helping them by to fix the electricity problem. Doing what? Doing what? This is not his area specialty. As far as I know, um, dear that is really in the is a numbers guy. So what is he doing out there? Besides the lonely people, huh? Thank you, partner. Besides the lonely people, huh? We're using their efficiency. We can't have government now trying to impress him. Press the work. I didn't stress. He think he was out there. He flick out. But when Joseph, he flick out or he swim out. What did he do? He got out there obstructing progress. You're not an engineer. You're not a linesman. You're not a line technician. Eh? He's part of the problem. If you're not part of the solution, he's part of the problem. What is he doing out there? What is he doing out there? You know, when he stands, he's going to get three other people. He and his take up a lot of room there. What is he doing out there? I don't know what he's doing out there, folks. But that being said, that being said, the main event, folks, have a gentleman joining us, Dr. Vincent Adams. Look, look at some quarters. I know you got real doctors. All right? This is not in his heart of hearts, he's a doctor. He is a real doctor. He got no PhD that was bestowed on him. He got a PhD he's studying in school for. Study hard and you got to give your doctoral thesis and then you got to defend it. He's not a quarter. All right? It's heart of hearts. He's a real doctor. And he's a real doctor. Not like them people 40 years ago, somebody from some no name university gave a PhD and they pamphlet themselves. He gives people over the head, then they must call them doctor. And you should come and debate and talk and discuss with proper people. It's using the island glass. Folks without any foreign My privilege. My privilege to invite doctor, 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 the good doctor. Yep. Adams, Vince Adams, former EPA chairman. Dr. Adams, you well? Welcome, sir. Hey, thank, thanks, Sherrod. I, hey, I was not, not beginning to enjoy your show here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was not beginning to enjoy it myself, and I know I'm going to enjoy it even more with you and your doc. You know, they've got a lot of issues circulating out there in oil and gas. We always say in this program, we don't touch it nearly enough. A lot of misrepresentations that are being made out there, doc. Tell us about EEPGL and the fact that they are registered the same 
that they registered locally. When in fact they may be registered in the Bahamas. What is that about that? Tell us about this EEPGL. I, I hear Sherrod and, and you welcome to, to your great audience as usual. Um, but I, I, you know, I was listening to the, I'm looking at the, the Glenn Lyle show with the Honorable Vice President and the show. I mean, I, this was something that was in the making for what, I don't know, maybe two years now. That So it attracted quite a bit of attention, of course. So I made sort of nice set aside sometime. And I, I almost fell out of my chair several times. My head was spinning with the kind of stuff that I was hearing. And one of the things that jumped out at me. Was it good stuff? <laughs> it depends if you're in it for entertainment or, or whether you want the, the, the real facts. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that jumped out at me, you know, I could not believe that the Honorable Vice President, who's supposed to be the guru on oil and gas, and managing EPGL, which is ESO Exploration Guyana Limited, which mm -hmm. is a subsidiary corporation of Exxon. Mm -hmm. and they are registered in the Bahamas. Guess what the vice president kept bragging about? As matter of fact, he was taking credit for them, for them registering in Guyana. Wow. So when he said it the first time, I said, well, I'll slip with the tongue. But I don't know what, what you say after the second, the third, the fourth, and at least five times. I, I don't know if it's just true ignorance or if he's ill-advised, but there's no excuse for the president, the big company who's managing everything, all the resources, you know, is going to, and you do not even know. But he was taking, he just assumed that it has to be, it's, it's a no-brainer for him, you know. Well, it has to be that they registered here. But here's, here's the other thing that I even wrote an article about that two weeks ago. Kaichor News had written an article about that a few weeks ago. And this company, EPGL, they paid for 2020 and 2021 $2.2 billion to their home office in the Bahamas. $2.2 billion US dollars, which converts to half, about a half a trillion Guyana dollars. Wow. Coming US dollars. To Guyana. It should have been coming to Guyana. But guess what? It's registered in the Bahamas. So now, I know the, the the vice president should be in shock right now because I know that he, he just swear that that's a no-brainer. It's his own words. That has to be a no-brainer. He assumed that here. So, Mr. Vice President, I hope you, now that you've learned, tell us what are you going to do in terms of taking action, to, whether it's transferring the registration here or not. So, Mr. Vice President, you need to come out and, to me, apologize to the nation and tell them what, what action you're going to be taking. Um, so here's the other thing. It, well, this here really, this here really caught me. I mean, I, 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 I didn't know what to do. I thought I wasn't hearing correct. I had to go listen to the tape again, Sherrod. Tell us. All, all along, you remember we've been talking, the full liability coverage has been in this. Yep, yep, yep. yep. And you remember I've been, the, you know, made, the way made person pushing it. This man at one time came out and said that I was already dreaming this stuff, that nothing of the sort existed in the permit. Do you know what this man did there? And then you produced, I think, an email to that effect. I put it, I put it in the letters. I quoted it. This, when he was asked about it, well, Mr. Mr. Vice President, how about full liability coverage? I, I fell out of my chair when he said, oh, it's in all of the permits already. That's exactly what I've been saying when he said that I was dreaming this stuff up. He even went for the share, I don't know if you saw it, but the guy, somebody gave, it this, gave him this thing to read. He even read the same things that I have been um, putting in my letters to the editor. He read the same thing that is in the permit to say that it, there is full liability coverage. However, I wish that the question that should have followed up, okay, Mr. Vice President, you have it in the permit. So why are you allowing Exxon to violate it? Because they're not meeting those requirements. So here's what's his requirements. We all have health insurance. Well, most of us have health insurance. We have automobile insurance. Uh -huh. So let's say you get in a crash, Harold, and you go and the, your insurance doesn't cover everything. They might cover a part. Let's say they cover 50% of whatever they damage it. Guess where the, the rest of it coming from? It's your pocket, right? Mm -hmm. it's the same exact thing. So full coverage means you have insurance. And anything over and above that, somebody has to cover it. 
So what full liability is, and by the way, the guy is now taking credit for that that is written into the permit. But guess where? Who wrote the language? It was in the past coalition when I was there at EPA. We wrote the language for that full liability cover. And here's what it says. It says, Exxon, you have to go out there and buy insurance first. That's in the permit. Secondly, anything over and above that insurance, Exxon parent company, not EPGL. EPGL is just a subsidiary. Anything over and above that, we want a letter of guarantee from Exxon to say that they will cover that. They signed up to that in the permit. So all mm -hmm. you know was a guarantee letter that we were almost gotten the guarantee letter finished when I was there. And then as soon as I left, they scrapped it. So a lot of things seem to have gone missing, a lot of documents and so on. Oh, Iran was raising that as an issue quite quite recently. A lot of documents. They're getting rid of they then they're accusing me. They say, Well, I must have taken documents from <laughs> from they think you done it. Trump. You know, but so that is so what we're saying is anything over and above that now they're claiming they've got six hundred million dollars in insurance. Now mm -hmm. guess what the Macondo, the spill in the Gulf of Mexico cost seventy billion dollars. Yeah, yeah. So it's really inadequate, basically. You know, I, I, that's an understatement. So think about this now. If you get a, let's say you get a spill like the Macondo, they have an insurance for six hundred million. What we had in place is for full liability coverage, which is in the permit that they agreed to, except that the president is not is allowing them to get away with not satisfying that. Yeah. So anything over and above that six. So let's say you have a spill of like Macondo, where is yeah. six million? The six hundred million insurance you still have sixty nine billion and 400 million left who's gonna pay that you know what who pays it well it's left to us now because since it's not signed the country or the country has to has to has so to we really work with exxon exxon are working for me he's been working for them and that is the issue that he's he, he, he never answered because and 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 Doug, i want to underscore that this oil spill is not a far-fetched issue because quite recently you had a couple of barriers about that still right over there well not only right in our neighbor backyard in peru Mm -hmm. We had a small spill, and Peru was in the same boat like us. They didn't have this full coverage, and they had to take Repsol to court and sue them for four point five billion. And mm -hmm. now they're doing exactly what what I did when I was at EPA to put into legislation where they've got to sign up to cover everything over and above. So we, so the six hundred million is a is a drop in the ocean, and he's not explaining. He wants so we had. Unlimited coverage, right? So guess what this guy is talking about now? To cut that unlimited coverage to $2 billion. Mm -hmm. so here we, so if something happens, anything over $2 billion, we're going to have to cover it. You know, there's no question about it. So and a government, a caring government is going to allow that? A what? A caring government back is going to allow that? A, a what kind of government? Sorry. Caring, caring, caring. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Here. Well, well, we know we, we, you can judge whether this government is a caring government or not. And the reason why the reason why the coalition had it is because obviously the coalition cared and understood the consequences that said, Exxon, you're not just going to come here and take your hundreds of billions of dollars that you're going to take away without ensuring that the people are protected. And if something happens, could you imagine what's going to happen here, Sherrod, that, that if we've got to cover a 60 60 billion US dollars. Is that we then things more tight for me? The tight right now that will be more tight. Well you're a member of parliament. You know you you're a top member of parliament. Our budget, our national budget is what about two billion? Mm -hmm. Hospital alone is gonna be like talk to five times our national budget. Yeah we done we done we 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 done so that's all you and here the other thing is you know it, it was really shameful to hear when 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 MP Patterson you you brought up this you remember the motion for full liability full liability correct correct i could not believe that these men like that. they were saying that it's going to cost too much a guarantee letter doesn't cost is zero it, it's just a letter of guarantee to say anything over and above the insurance and these guys are so i don't know they're not even reading just like the vice president but, they don't know what's going on yeah so but doc, doc, why are they looking out for us more as a people 
I, I think it's just there. It's the right. right. And that is us saying this. That, let, let, let me let me understand. That is us saying this. Start of news, pretty independent and middle of the road. They said consistently, it seems as though this regime is more like a partner with Exxon Mobil and not a regulator. Well, I why are they looking out? I, it, I, I, to me, it's worse than that. Exxon, Tell us. Exxon, and I've, I've got proof for it because as soon as I left, they started turning everything wrong that I had put in. X is worse than that. It's not a partner. Exxon mm -hmm. is running the show. Exxon is controlling everything because even in the permits, when I read the permits, there is no way that I know that the EPA folks cannot write that language that I see in the permit. There's nobody mm -hmm. here understood, understand who those language. Exxon is running the show. They're getting direction. As a matter of fact, I, not that wow. it to me. You know, I even got inside, wow. inside scoop, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. Exxon was the one who said, because even the, the vice president, and they were on record, and the, the, the president, had the vice president called me and said, oh, Vince, I want you to run. This was after they sent me on leave. Mm -hmm. said, oh, I want you to run the oil and gas sector. They were, they were on record at press conferences. The president even called me once. Vice President Jack even gave me his personal phone number, said to call him as soon as I get back from the vacation. And what I heard, what I heard now from, from the grapevine was Exxon said, no, I am too arrogant. I am, you know, uh, you know, but of course when- They want the Chihuahua. Yeah, they, yeah. They have no. That's what they want. So, right? so Exxon is running the show. They're getting whatever they want. When I read those so, tickets, you know, flaring, for example, under the collision, mm -hmm. we stop flaring. We told them they will not flare. Yeah. No, that you rather they pay for flaring, oh. right? We to pay than they actually stop the flaring, which brings into question that whether there is any real strengthening of environmental oversight. That's another issue. No, that's the other part where the, I, I mean, if there is the, well, that, that's probably among the biggest falsehoods that even came up with. Mm -hmm. he mentioned is one of the things he keeps saying that. They have, have strengthened environmental control. Well, the first thing. Oh. Well, it, 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 I, I guess he, he's talking from the opposite side of it, you know, because he whatever he says is the opposite. When he says strength, it's weakening it tremendously. I just told you, flaring. Fluff and bluff. We said, no, you cannot flare. He said, yes, you can flare as much as you want as long as you pay for it. No, what kind of stupidness is that? That means that if, you can put whatever pollutants you want into the air as long as you can pay for it. So, so you don't need an EPA anymore to stop polluting. All you got to do is set up an office at the Ministry of Finance, and everybody comes in and says, "I'm going to, and I'm going to flare X number of tons of contaminants in the air, radioactivity, whatever it is." And here is the, you know, and here is the other thing, Cheryl. The flaring, they are gaining thirty times the amount of money they're getting just from the flaring. Just yeah, and just pay less tenants. Thirty times the amount of money they're getting from the flaring mm -hmm. compared to the fee they're paying for it. Thirty times. So if you're a businessman, if somebody give you a deal like that, if you invest a dollar and you're gonna yeah. pay forty dollars. Yeah, that, that, that like if we a Paco and XM Mobile busting me back. Oh, without question. Here's the other thing that we stop. Here's the other thing that we stop when when before I left. The, and he started, here's, the, here's another blatant lie, Cheryl. I mean, every time I, you know, I cringe every time I hear. The guy said that for the first time, they're treating the water that they're dumping into the ocean. But there are two things there. Uh -huh. No dumping of water into the ocean. It's not, we said that water has all kinds of time. Doc, Doc, let me ask you a question. As you on that. We got the capacity to monitor them if they're oh, treating the water. I, Absolutely not. I'm, and I'm going to get to that too. So we said, <laughs> well, no dumping, we said no dumping of water, no flaring. When I left, they decided to give them, so they're dumping that water and that water has oil in it. For every, listen to this folks, for every million, it's every million barrels of water and they're going to be billions that are going to be dumped into the ocean. This will produce water that comes up with the oil and it has all kinds of toxic stuff, mercury, mm -hmm. lead, Mm -hmm. PPP activity, and then it has some oil in it, and the concentration of oil alone for every million barrels that are dumped, 
there's 30 barrels of oil, which means over the life of the field, you're going to get hundreds of thousands of barrels of pure oil dumped into the ocean. Yeah. That thing, we, and we said, no, you, the common practice, the, the standard is you re-inject the water back into the reservoir all over the world. That's, that, that's what you're supposed to do. The, the other thing that... So, 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 so why it sounds so lazy here is that the oversight on the leash, Jaguars, is so poor? It's money. When I asked them, when I said, wait a minute, when we stopped them, by the way, when I said, and it's not only me alone, by the way, we had a team of with GGMC folks, myself, the, from the, then we had the Department of Energy, and even their own export, they brought in uh, uh, Alison Redford from Canada. She was a more adamant than, than we were, and we met with Exxon and told them they have to put in equipment to re-inject the water. So we had already made the decision and directed Exxon to do it, and as soon as I left, they didn't matter, they scrapped all of that. But yeah. know, when I asked them, the, yeah. I asked them the question, it's about money. They said, well, when I asked them how much it's going to cost, they said the equipment to re-inject, which is standard, by the way. They said mm -hmm. $300 million. I said, absolutely not. I said, but how much $300 million. I don't believe yeah. that. That's nonsense. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I said, they by the country. So you're telling me that the lives of the people of Guyana is yeah. worth $300 yeah. million. Dollars. Yeah, that's, that's basically what you what 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 you know that you find a government that's a paku and the bus me back and the bus you back and put salt bus me back that salt alone yeah. put the salt and pepper and yeah then, yeah bus me back all the time but we laughing we smiling over it and yeah and then Jack Leo is chatting out to me like if you know about oil and gas but you're the expert you understand oil and gas you're an expert studied experts in this field worked in the highest levels of the U.S. government. You are exporting petroleum and all of that. And this guy parading himself like he knows anything about this sector. And I've no absolutely nothing. Absolutely. Here's the other thing, Sherrod. You, you talk about monitoring. Do we have the capacity mm -hmm. to monitor? I recognize that immediately. I was the only petroleum engineer and, and you know, environmental engineer. I mean, that's the one thing that, for what, you know, I've got both. It's a very unique, I, you know, not very many people have both qualifications and vast experience in both areas, environmental and petroleum. I work for British Petroleum as a, as a senior reservoir engineer. So I understand all this stuff. Yeah. So, so I went immediately to the World Bank. You know, I was introduced by the, uh, by the Brazilian ambassador to the lady who had the World Bank in Guyana. And mm -hmm. I gave her for some money. Mm -hmm. She gave us a million dollars. She brought in an export. And we put together uh, a report with and with a 36 man, 36 person unit at the EPA, which highly specialized petroleum people to monitor, to have people there 24 7 on the ship. They were like that. They scrapped it. But what was funny, they, that was another thing when they were saying that I was dreaming this stuff, it never exists. Well, some the, the cover for the report got leaked to the press. So when the press splashed the front cover it, and they called the, the, the executive director, he said, well, all right, well, you know, I, I, I really wasn't sure. I didn't know much about it because I wasn't there when it happened. And then when they called the, the, the minister, guess what the minister said? Well, no, no, we never scrapped it. We're working with it. <laughs> you know, so they, they're not even getting their story straight. It's a PVP. It's a PVP. But but Doc, let's let's touch on, on one of the big ones because these guys when campaigning, they said that we don't know what we're doing about oil and gas. As a matter of fact, they had an organization called Global Wickedness. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting that the PVP went to them, Global Wickedness. They produce a fantastic piece of writing that said we don't know nothing, how much money we are wasting and stand to lose because of how we set up the whole thing. And then once them boys came in, same global wickedness. Come back and say, well, they couldn't stand by this report anymore and put it back quite interestingly. Right? So these guys, you know, campaign saying that they're going to renegotiate. Right. We didn't make a good deal. They're going to make a better deal. They're going to renegotiate the PSA, the, the production sharing agreement of 2016. Two years later, they unchange a word. And they want to talk about sanctity of contract. Jack he, he pretends he's the expert on everything. The expert on law. The expert on petroleum. The expert on oil and gas. The expert on economics. It's just rough, but rough. So why haven't they been able to do renegotiate the contract? Again, if I circle back to, um, to what's his name, Mr. Ram, and that document that he said he, uh, he knew was at the DEJ registry, went looking for it, and then it went missing, and then he seemed to have found a copy somewhere. It says, basically, that the ACMO AFC, um, you know, made some foreign into that very sanctity of contract and having some amendments to, to that contract. 
Talk to us about that. Well, even I, oh, even, this even, even, Cheryl, but even I did that when I was at EPA. Mm -hmm. You see this unlimited liability, this full insurance thing that they've agreed to that it's in the permit that he so proudly read. That's not in the yeah. contract. Yeah. You know what the contract said? The contract said self insurance, which means EPGL could insure themselves. They're not taking no insurance. I changed that. I told them no, that's unacceptable because EPGL didn't have any assets. So I said no. So I so I working for the coalition in the past government. We already changed what was in the contract by that unlimited. They, they brought that because they told me that they said, well, you can't change it because in the contract. I said, okay. I said, well, you're not going to produce a barrel of oil unless it's changed. So they quietly went. They changed it. The other thing that 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 I changed was this. The contract said the government the government has to give them seven days notice to even set foot on the ship. I said, no, we will have wow. access at any time, including wow. come visit. So, so I changed those two major things in the contract. So you cannot, and I, I written, I have written by about other people. Yeah. So don't tell me about sanctity. And, and the same contract that they were in a years to change in campaigning, now is, you know, that they, they, they can't touch the love of war. This contract is an order. Of let me give you some, let me give you some quotes from them. From the president and the vice president and Nandalal. Oh, when they were in opposition, this is peanuts we're giving away. You know, we're getting peanuts while we give it. We're the pres the vice president. We we have sold out the nation's patrimony. Yeah. Said yeah. the coalition deal will harm the country for decades. Yeah. So if, yeah. if at the time they believe it will harm, so 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 they now yeah. they endorse that that they and they put in the hand of the same deal and say, you know, I will uphold it. Right. You know they call the hypocrites, the hypocrites. I call the play manager. Hypocrites. Right after the election, as a matter of fact, the president, the president is on, is on, is on a tape after he was with, with I think critic or the guy, after he got elected as the president, the, and the critic asked him the specific question. Well, Mr. President, how about we negotiate it of the contract? He said yes. He was, mm -hmm. there was no. That video is on it. it it's on social media. Where well, you don't graph with critics anymore. You see, you don't, if you want graphics, go by critics. <laughs> right. But but so so the, so that's the you know the 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 the, 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 the you know the guys who are, they're just I don't know if they're being I doubt whether they're just being an advice. You know I, I I would I would expect that folks in their offices would at least have a little bit of smartness that the stuff doesn't make any sense. But when you keep repeating the same lies over and over, yeah, so yeah, wrong, especially when other people, yeah, this is this is a lie. You know why repeat it over and over? But it's because it's to provide disinformation to the people and to confuse the people. But there's no way that they could. Well, they, they can because you know. I mean, what else do you expect that they're gonna say com things completely opposite of what of what actually exists? Yeah, and that finally, before I let you go, I noticed lots of the experts in this field, oil and gas, they talk, uh, they, they're in unison about the prophecy of information, about the prophecy of reporting and getting their hand on data that reflects um, the current state of affairs in the oil and gas sector. Talk to us about that. Well, since the administration, came, well, if you recall, Sherrod, when I was in office, every, you know, I was in the media every, you remember, because I, I was full disclosure, it didn't matter whether it was bad, good, or indifferent. There was nothing yeah. to be hidden. So the data was always there. People call me, I get my report every yeah, day. You're always out there engaging the public, engaging the press as well. But this, this Doc, allow me to say, this new CEO, he has a striking resemblance to the chairman of GCOM. They all, like, they live on the rock. They only come out once in a while. Take a little breathe and go back in. You hear the latest. I know if you've been funny, you don't understand what, what happened the latest. When Tell us. You know, the same stuff about the liability coverage, and when I when I was talking about it, and the vice president they said that that was dreaming and stuff, and even when I talked about us meeting with the World Bank to look after the insurance, oh, they just dreaming it. Well, the the, the World Bank, not the World Bank, the, the Bank of Ghana, they verified it, and then a couple of letters got leaked out of the EPA that verified everything I said. It got leaked to the press, so it was published on the front page. Guess what the guess what the CEO did at EPA? He moved all of Exxon's files now into his office. Yeah. 
So they yeah. have my room that everything that they organized everything that I set up. Yeah. They didn't have anything before. Very set up. That has been dismantled. He moved it to his office. So wow. the people were trained. We trained the four people to take care of the filing. It didn't matter whether you work there or not. You had to check out files. You had to check it back in by a certain time. All of that now has been dismantled. So he's now become the filing clerk for the agency wow. for Exxon. So, so that's wow. it. So, Double dipping. Yeah, well, so guess what? So we've been putting pressure to report real time data. You remember even even Glenn Lyle saying, you know, what is real, real time stuff? So the vice president jumps up there. Well, Glenn, we can report real time spending. So they told them, but we're reporting, but we can, we're getting real time production, which is, a, you know, if you go on one of ship, they've got a control room and you're getting real time read out of all the production data. So after they, Putting, after we've been putting pressure on them, about two or three months ago, they finally decided, they said, yeah, yeah, they bragged, you know, one big hoopla. Now we've got the the all the data being reported. Cheryl, guess what happened? You know, I yes. set the data that was reported because I started checking. 11th of July. So mm -hmm. two months now, there's been nothing after this big hoopla. Yeah, yeah. What about this one? It's just like them boys. The way the data they, coming soon. And the way they're reporting it, Jared, is to confuse people. How many of you know, I don't know, you know, I, I know you did law and that kind of stuff. You should see how this how these wiggly lines and graphs, and you got it, you got mm -hmm. it. Yep. They want to come Oh, yeah. You Let me project. You need specialist training to understand it. Instead of reporting the direct number, oh, they're just but the, but even then, at least a half a loaf is better than none. But now you're not getting any loaf again after the big hoopla about well now we're reporting all the data no data Sharon. no data for over two months yeah yeah so, that, that half a loaf seems to be um symptomatic of the entire economy because i mean half a loaf is quite a loaf because things have gone down so so bad and so far now there's another issue i want to raise with you that's happening we're told that the epa and it's very and a very very sad note there was some staff there who reached out to us and they're talking now about the Indianizing of the EPA, how they're getting rid of a lot of folks of a certain complexion and new and bringing in some folks, as you said earlier, no experience in this issue. And that's why we're getting lots of the problems we're getting at EPA, perhaps. You know, it's sad. Well, well you know, and I, and I get, and I'm telling you, I'm not exaggerating. There were staff who called and cried, okay? And staff who just left because they just couldn't handle it. That we had, mm -hmm. let's say, about the top out of the top fifteen, the top executives when I was there, the top, you know, in the top after me reporting to me. Mm -hmm. I counted them out. About ten have either been removed or left. Wow. Ten, most wow. of them moved, some demoted, and it so happened. It so happened. I don't know. You know, you could call it by coincidence. They just appear to belong to one race. Yeah. Except, yeah. except incidentally, the Indian, incidentally. Lawyer, the Indian lawyer, bright young Indian lawyer, he got removed. Guess why? Because he would not compromise in terms of doing what his job is supposed to be in terms yeah. of going after Exxon and say, you have to do this. We're going to take you to court. The next thing you know, and that was one of the best lawyers. I had a lawyers work for me all over the United States. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Robert? Sam Benny Seal. You know what I mean, Robert? Sam Benny Seal. But all of those, the top, the top level officers in the agency, that that top levels, and I know that many of them have called you guys, with you know, as the MPs. I know that for a fact. Yeah. They called you. They got rid of them completely. You know, and you know, up to recently, one of my best, and these are. Look, I brought I brought in three people from the United States with with vast experience. One guy had over thirty years in environmental stuff, another guy had over thirty something years in engineering. Another guy, the only safety engineer that we yeah. had in the agency, and that's very important. All three of them are gone. Yes, and that's sad. That that's very very sad. You know, the EPA reminds us of that boat that crashed recently in um, on the in the Scribble River. The uh, the the captain, quote unquote, was not certified, should not have been operating that vessel. So if you train to see the beacons, you're gonna know what to look for. But if you're in train, you're gonna what happening at EPA now is gonna be happening. You know, because the set of people who should not be there. 
And the one thing that I trained my staff when I when I arrived there, it was strictly just I you you remember you I told every minister knew that they have they'd better not call me about tell me about you know they've got friends not the, um, the even ministers would tell me why you know somebody call him and they had to tell him now nah, this is one guy we can't mess with and if you only know that you're calling me you're in more trouble the thing that is still professional oh i, I went to stay professional who supported the coalition i went after a certain individual who made the, the worst mistake is to go to and call ministers and that was the worst thing that he could have done but yeah not that, you know what's going on right now based on information from the officers We've got people in the government calling the officers directly and asking about what's the status of this permit. And you know, yeah, that, yeah, why, why less, doc? All of that, why, why less? less? Why, why less? You're gonna have to leave it there, Dr. Vincent Adams, an expert in petroleum, oil, and gas, and all, all things related. A man worth his salt works at the highest levels of the U.S. government and worked with us. And we didn't like that, then buys them like they didn't want the expert, the technical folks. The one people who are yes men. Doc, thanks for your time and thanks for always showing up when we call upon you. Oh, definitely. Any any time, sure. It was it was a pleasure. And it was an education for me, certainly. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> All right, guys. That's gonna do it for us in this time. That's our program. That is our time. Thanks for staying with us. We know we went a little bit into the overtime this evening, but it's not always we focus on oil and gas, and we gotta pick up our coverage. A little more addition on the oil and gas issues, folks. We gotta pick up on it. That's gonna be for us, however. Stay safe wherever you're joining us from Hazel King. Thanks for staying with us. Paula Johnson, thanks for staying with us. Our twin part, Cheryl Moraine, Asquith Charles, Gleisis, Gellis Gibson, and Rosanna Barton, Asquith, Bantu King. Thanks for staying with us. That's our program, guys. That's our time. Stay safe. Stay safe.